Hi there, Jesse. So first of all, I've um, decided to patch these holes up just to help improve the simplicity of the toolpath that will get generated. Um, and to do that, I went into the patch environment and just created a simple patch, selected the edge of these holes. I have to do one by one. Um, OK, and then repeat patch, OK, and so on. So I've got five patches, and then I come back into the cam environment um, I've set up my job, um, so it's milling, I've specified this is the face coming up and I've just kept everything else as default. Um, and then I've used a 3D adaptive um, clearing here. Now I was trying to figure out what, size, what diameter tool to use based on these radiuses and I've chosen 5mm um, and that also meant there was slightly bigger than these holes here so um, HS7 would just ignore them completely. Um, but what it does mean is it won't drop down inside um, this pocket here and I'll show you why in a second. So all I've done is chosen my tool then on the geometry tab I've left the um, default stock contour but I've switched over to um, selection okay, and then I've chosen the machining boundary to be here and inside. So I only want the toolpath to generate inside this pocket. Um, I've adjusted the top height down to model top and that's because adaptive will if I didn't do that adaptive would run another toolpath around the top of this pocket at the top of um, at the very top of it at the same level so it's kind of a wasted toolpath um, by dropping this it's kind of allowing for the fact that I haven't faced the top of the stock off so I've just um, dropped this down onto the top and then importantly I've turned on flat area detection so that what that's going to do is it's going to adjust the step down so that it gets to within the um, oops, it gets to within the axial stock to leave value um, on these faces here I'm just going to cancel that because I just stuffed up my toolpath um, so it's going to adjust the step down so that it leaves um, 0.5 mil axially on all the faces um, machine cavities should be turned on, it's on by default anyway, and I've left everything else in here as standard. You may find that sometimes with larger tools in smaller pockets that you have to adjust the helical ramp diameter to give it a chance to actually generate the ramp in toolpath or change it to a different ramp type. And so the end result is a 3D adaptive toolpath it clears out all of the stock um, some weirdness going on here but that's okay um, and as you can see it's not dropping down inside this pocket now the reason why it's not is because the ramp diameter and the diameter of the tool would be too big to be able to ramp down into it and then actually remove material effectively so we'll have to come back and do that in a separate operation so I'm good with that um, Doing that in this as a separate operation, I've just used 2D adaptive because I, I really don't need 3D here. I've chosen the 3 mil flat tool, selected that face. I've changed my heights, so my top height I've specified as this face here because I know that the material has been re removed um, down to this point anyway and through into this pocket, so I don't want to waste a whole bunch of time um, trying to get down to a height that is already where there's no material already and I left everything else as default and so that's generated the toolpath in the bottom of that pocket Okay, so one of the cool um, toolpaths to use in the 3D um, group is horizontal I'm going to continue using the tool of this size here um, my geometry I'm going to set a machining boundary here um, selection Okay, I want it to stay inside there's no point in it going outside of that or on center um, I don't need an additional offset. Um, my heights, so I want to contain my toolpath between these two planes here, that's fine. Um, I am going to leave some radial stock to leave. Let's go with 0.2. And okay. So that's going to go around and find all of the heights inside this model and apply toolpaths to them um, and now all that would be left is to come around and do these contour passes so 
So I'm going to reuse the same tool, 3mm, and we'll try and do this um, this contour here. Now it's, it's trying to select all of these edges around here, and I really don't want it to, so um, select it if I cl click that twice, it's an open contour already. Um, and I want to start, select open contour. I'm going to deselect that one there. Then come all the way around. I want to deselect that one there, so it's automatically selected the first and the last contour. So I'm just overriding that and making sure my arrow is on the inside of that geometry. So that's all I need there. Now I may want to cut slightly past that um, for your slot tool to clear out underneath here. Then you just do the same type of selection, but on these edges here, and make sure your lead ins and lead outs are set right. And the rest of the, the contours are pretty straightforward. You've got edges and everything that you need to select all of them. So I'll leave that to you. And um, I hope this has helped out somewhat. And have a good day. Cheers. Bye.